Uh, hi there, I'm uh, Tucker Allred. I'm one of the neurology doctors here at Doylestown Hospital. Uh, right now I'm in my uh, outpatient office, but I'm usually in the hospital, maybe 75% of the time. And I uh, trained at the Philadelphia uh, Thomas Jefferson University, did some additional training in stroke and vascular neurology, and wanted to talk about kind of risk factors for stroke. It's uh, May, which is an important month for kind of stroke awareness. And, you know, we like to think about risk factors for it would be, you know, the things that affect your blood vessel health is probably one big category. Uh, another one would be your heart health. Uh, those are probably the two biggest categories. After that, there's a myriad of kind of other causes and contributors to stroke. But the first one for blood vessel health far and away is hypertension just high blood pressure, which is kind of known as the silent killer. You don't really feel a whole lot from high blood pressure, barely feel anything really, maybe some headache occasionally, but most people don't feel anything. And it's an important to kind of get checks at the primary care doctor and every doctor's visit where they're looking at your blood pressure. Um, so that's the most important risk factor, I would say, for actually stroke and, and preventing that. Um, cholesterol, and which kind of plays a role in the putting kind of blood gunk and plaque in our blood vessels, um, kind of call it the good cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, the bad ones kind of depositing gunk in your arteries. Uh, that can be somewhat familial induced, but it's certainly also influenced by our diet and exercise habits. And that can contribute to plaque or atherosclerosis, or I just kind of term it gunk, uh, in the arteries of the neck, maybe the big blood vessels coming out of the heart or the arteries within the brain itself. Um, so that's an important risk factor. Um, diabetes is certainly an important one, and, and that contributes to that same plaque in either the blood vessels of the neck or the head. Uh, and then cigarette smoking, of course, which um, is just really, really bad for your blood vessels. The next one would be the heart. And what you may have heard about is, you know, it's called atrial fibrillation. That's an arrhythmia that's common with age. Uh, as we grow older, sometimes the conduction system in our heart becomes to be abnormal and it beats in an irregular way. An understanding of that is somewhat that AFib or atrial fibrillation, uh, it's a malfunctioning heart arrhythmia uh, in which it seems to be easier for the clot to uh, be sent up from the heart, an irregularly beating heart, but it's possibly probably a little bit more complicated than that. But we know that blood thinners um, that thin our blood and prevent that kind of shooting up of clots, which is called an embolism, help reduce the risk of stroke. So atrial fibrillation is certainly a, a, one of the most common causes I see. Heart health, you know, is, is very similar to blood vessel health and you know, exercise, um, talking to people if you've got palpitations or shortness of breath or chest pain is important to kind of heart health or recognizing a problem. Um, heart failure can happen for many different reasons. That's where the pumping problem with the heart means that maybe the heart isn't beating quite as strongly as it should be. And maybe there's not as good blood flow through just a poorly beating heart um, can, can also contribute to a risk of stroke. The next other ones I'd think about would be alcohol intake. Um, you know, significant, serious, you know, high levels of alcohol probably puts you at more risk of a hemorrhagic or what's called a bleeding type of stroke more than uh, an ischemic stroke with just poor blood flow from a blocked blood vessel. So significant alcohol use seems to, you know, can cause traumatic problems with, the, with brain injuries from intoxication. It can uh, have effects on the blood vessels themselves as well. So that is certainly a risk factor. Um, those are the biggest ones. Um, certainly we touch upon kind of COVID disease and, and what we've gone through. And in the beginnings of that pandemic, we started to see kind of unusual cases of stroke and, and people who really shouldn't have been having strokes, they didn't have significant uh, risk factors. Um, and they were really found out to be due to COVID. It seems that the research is pointing towards a high state of inflammation it seems to either injure blood vessels in our body uh, or kind of set off our body system for clotting and becomes deranged and abnormal, or at least to these abnormal blockages in the blood vessels and can lead to pretty significant strokes. Generally, what I counsel my patients is that the risk of getting a stroke with COVID uh, vastly is vastly, vastly higher than actually getting COVID than compared to getting the vaccine. As with most diseases, you know, if you have the actual disease, influenza, the actual disease, COVID, the actual viral infection, it's always 
uh, a greater risk of a worse thing happening to you compared to the risks of the vaccine. So people are kind of worried if they've had a stroke, am I eligible for the vaccine? Should I worry about it? And in general, I mean, my advice is you know, get the vaccine. The, the benefits certainly vastly outweigh the risks. Um, those are the biggest risk factors for stroke and um, you know, common ways to recognize it. I think the mnemonic uh, be fast is probably best. You might see that on billboards. Uh, B would be stand for balance, like suddenly I'm dizzy or spinning or I can't walk correctly. Uh, e stands for eyes, sudden vision change, double vision or loss of vision. Uh, F for face, um, droopy face on one side. Uh, a for arm, and maybe the arm or the leg is suddenly weak or paralyzed or numb. It's often one side of the body that's affected because of our brain anatomy. Uh, S is for speech. Maybe your speech is slurred, uh, or maybe you just have difficulty getting out actual words or you can't understand words. And T is time. The sooner you get an evaluation, uh, the better people do, just because the brain can't go very well for, for very long without um, blood. So I, again, I hope you've learned a little bit something from this. Um, I'm one of the neurology doctors. I work in the office here, and I, I'm mostly in the hospital as well. Um, but I hope you have a safe May. And uh, have a good summer, and thanks for your time.